Hey, everybody. This week's Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Blue Blocks. That's right. This is a great new sponsor. We are thrilled about Blue Blocks. You got your Blue Blocks on? I couldn't find them, but I love them. I'm a big fan. I think they're in my suitcase. They block the sun. They block the computer screen. That blue light, they block it. Yeah, they block it. My wife uh, got a pair. They sent me a pair. I gave it to my wife, and we're making love with them on. She uses them in the computer because she's on the computer all the ding-dong day. So she loves them. She looks hot in them. First up, the Sleep Plus. you got to get the Sleep Plus. Get yourself some real red lenses for true blue and green light blocking. Use after sundown, folks. It's like a vampire glasses. Yes. If you have trouble sleeping or get anxious at night, these are for you. And, you know, we both got that going on. So oh, yeah. We got some of those. We got the clear blue light. That's to protect your eyes from getting headaches and eye strain when you're looking at your computer all day, all night, looking at Twitter, Instagram, the whole thing. I love them. I mean, they sent us a couple pairs. Like I said, I use it. My wife and I share a pair. Ah. I just love it. It really protects your eyes. And what's more important than your vision? I mean, uh-huh. come on. What Good what point. could be more important? I just heard your cat for the first time ever. I don't know if somebody stepped on her. its toe. Oh, all right. Well, the worst is over, kitty cat. Yeah. Uh, Wait but, the neutering. But anyways, just uh, hit pause. That was a cat pun. Ah. That stinks. Go uh, to Blue Blocks. I thought it was perfect. Blueblocks.com, I think, is the thing. Blueblocks.com, you're going to use promo code TUESDAYS. Tell them how to do all the stuff. Get on it, folks. I got a pair of Clark Summer Glow. You got the Wayfarers. We look cool. We look snazzy, and they help your eyeballs. Support Blue Blocks because they support Tuesdays with Stories. Get 20% off with code TUESDAYS at blueblocks.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com slash Tuesdays for 20% off. Blue Blocks. Dot com slash Tuesdays and use code Tuesdays for 20% off. Get Tell them Mark and Joe sent you. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, he shits at a sandbox. Hey, folks, here we are. It's Tuesday. Good to have you. Good to smell you. Good to fuck you. Yeah, we're back, and uh, we got Chuck is here. Chuck Knobloch is up here, and he doesn't have the yips anymore, folks. We got three cameras and two lights, and uh, I can barely see you because there's so much light and camera, and Chuck's dick is out. I know. It's like a gay porn or a child pornography shoot. Chuck really knows how to set up these. Look, they're all at dick level and everything. You really know how to set up a shoot there, Fatty. Yeah, Chuck fit, and right on time. We're only uh, 100 minutes late, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck D., but... Good to have you. You're a great part of the team. And, uh, hey, here comes the, the old lioness. Hey, good idea. Get that liquid death out of here. That puss will steal your, your liquid. He yeah. likes it wet. Yeah, I'm drinking some liquid death courtesy of the Omaha Funny Bone, one of the best clubs in the world. And uh, they got this liquid death mountain water. They sent me three cases of it. And I love it because you know me. I'm a sober asshole. Yeah. So I feel like I'm pounding cock over here. Look yeah, it. you look like a big booze bag. You know what you should do is get a brown paper bag on that puppy just to really bring it home. Well, and it would be fun to have the cops come up and, and throw me on the ground and piss in my mouth and just say, hey, it's Alp water, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Black Lives Matter. Take it, Chauvin. <laughs> Yeah, bad guy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Seems well, like a jerk. The know? irony is the he did Whoa. the kneeling like Kaepernick. But, uh, yeah, wow, the cat is uh, up this. and at him. Well, they can't see. I feel guilty. The cat's trying to jump out the window and hates itself. Well, Chuck's got nine cameras over there, but he's texting his mother on Father's Day. I mean, yeah. the cat just went on his Heinz, and it's four and a half feet long, Heinz ketchup. Get yeah, up on the yeah. thing again. Yeah, that's a big cat. It's a big bitch and uh i think he's uh got some he's in heat as they say oh is that right something's going on you might have to put a, a gallagher bag on your leg as he might squirt on it wow who in this house doesn't have heat you know what i mean i mean you're blowing up your wife is doing well the cat's standing on its hind legs i mean this is a, well, this is a hot house here i'm glad summer's coming because we didn't have heat this winter so uh thank god it's it's not cold out anymore but whoo it's good to see you i mean this cat is 11 and a half feet long. Between yeah. the tail and the hind legs stretch? Oh, yeah. It's huge. Uh, that, that cat could take down a gazelle. 
This is the squirreliest I've ever seen it, by the way. Look at it. It's I, losing its shit. I think he sees a Puerto Rican or a bird. <laughs> Something's going on. I think there's a BLM march going on because it's on a swivel over there. Oh, yeah. He's on edge. <laughs> He's got. He's transphobic. It's a whole thing. But uh, either way, I feel bad. We're talking about the cat. They can't even see it. No, they know about the cat. He's, oh, you got the cat. He okay. Got the phone okay. Cat. Chuck's getting involved. I mean, I, I think it's fine. But the cat will walk All by right. at some point. It went by a second ago. Some people don't even watch the video. True. True. I forget this. Those weirdos out there who just do the audio on the commute to the uh, slaughterhouse or whatever they work at. <laughs> I think that. Uh, the cat shit smells, or the mic smells. Something smells. Cat shit. He's got some rough shit. I mean, look at the size of him. He shits out a fucking surfboard. <laughs> what am I smelling? Seriously, that's cat shit, it's right? It's got to be cat it's shit. It's really bad. Uh, yeah, I'm used to it by now, but uh, it's, I mean, a, it's a honker. I'll we tell might you have that. to pause or something. <laughs> pause. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. Well, we got we got a we got a shoot here. Let's we uh, chuck hold porn. Set up this whole thing. I feel like we should uh, keep rolling here. All right, let's keep rolling. But like, I genuinely might throw up. Ooh, yeah, that is a doozy. <laughs> Holy hell! It feels I can't see it, but it feels like uh, like orangey brown and wet, mm. like one of those like uh, mushy shit. Which, by the way, I noticed this earlier today. You know, if you have a dog in New York or anywhere, I guess. Yeah, you got to pick up the shit. And I saw a guy with like a German Shepherd. Oh and yeah. Is it Shepherd or Shepherd? Purd. Purd? Yeah. There's a PH. You're thinking of Chef. Well, but, no, I mean, I know what a chef is. He cooks <laughs> cats in Korea, but. <laughs> you got that right. The But a, a German Shepherd, isn't it Shepherd? It is. I guess is, when you yeah, say it fast, it's Shepherd. Yeah, the H is silent. Much, so it's not much Shepherd. Like oh, it's hitting the camera. Oh, God, it's batting at the microphone. This cat's uh, angry and violent. Something's going on here. But anyways, I saw this German Shepherd take it. I mean, the, the sound's going to be all that. fucked you gotta up. you got to film that. The That's cat is, is gnawing at the microphone. I mean, it's Jeez. I'm worried it's gonna, trouble. It's going to take that wire down with him because this cat weighs 16 pounds. You think after a big shit, the cat would be like, at its best. Oh, no. He's frisky right now. He's got the shit out of him. He's ready to rock and roll. Watch it, cat! Oh, my God. That was terrifying. I thought he was going to take the whole light rig down. I rig. genuinely might throw up. This is, like, really a bad shit. It's a problem. Shit. That's quite a boom boom. I feel like it didn't. Oh, it's on my mask. I can't have its asshole near my mask. No, no. You don't want that. Let me just you get a... us. There we go. Now you got your dirty foot on it. I don't... I'd take a dirty foot over a dirty asshole. Sure. Anyways, the German Shepherd, it took like the bushiest shit. Yeah. And all I could think is the guy had to immediately take the little plastic bag and pick up the mushy shit. Yeah. Oh, God, this cat is obsessed with you. It's butthole so close. Oh, no, it's really eating my mask now. All right, get, take the mask, put it under the it's pillow. It's got my tea. It's on my tea. It's got to sniff everything, you I gotta guess. You got to lock this thing up. I, mean, I can't live my life like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretend it's a uh, uh, immigrant child. And, oh, he and lock took the mask up. downtown. He's taking it to the lair. He better grab that mask. That's my only mask. I'll get you a mask. I feel bad. <laughs> the cat's anti-masker. Don't mask, don't tell. I mean, this is like uh, <laughs> this is this is horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh boy, we're getting off to a hell of a start. We got a six-foot tigress. We got a dog, oh. Dookie in the in the box over there. I left my tea bags. I forgot to take my tea bags out. So my tea tastes like the cat's ass. Oh yeah, well, everything's going wrong here. Yeah, you know what else is weird about cat shit is it turns white if you leave it out. It's like a black neighborhood. You know, it eventually goes gentrified. It's so weird how it turns white. Interesting. Well, speaking of turning white, I got I gotta just knock out my ailments right now, so everybody knows okay. I'm playing. On, I should be on the DL right now, but. Oh, shit, I hit Easy. it and it's upset. I He's tried to chew it the, off. Uh, oh, he doesn't like, boy, everything you do. That's a menthol wrapper. Oh, okay. God. What did the menthol. cat get into? I think it's some catnip. Look, he's eating the menthol wrapper. What the hell's <laughs> he really going ate on? It. I've never seen the cat like this. I'm nervous. What if he attacks? He's never attacked. I know, but he's never acted like this either. That's true. He's batting it around. I think he's ready to play time. He's, he's a little frisky. He's pent up. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, so I got, uh, speaking of turning white, I got I showed it to you off air, but I got a nasty canker on oh, it's backside, doozy. under my tongue, on top of a sharp molar. So my molar's scraping it. So then I bought some Dick Ebersol. Uh -huh. What's this called? Uh, Abriva? Ambasol, maximum strength. Can we, can we get a shot of that? I like having a camera guy just so we can say, can we get a shot of yeah, this? Yeah, that is fun. 
It's fun. Are we getting this? I've never. I've had cankers my whole life. I've never put a, an ointment on it. Put a dab on. The kids will love it. All right. It numbs you up. It's it's quite effective. But uh, you get some on your lips and in your your dick. Careful. Did you open the cap already? Because it leaks out. Oh, that geez. gets in your eye. Forget about oh, it. Oh man, I'll go Ray Charles on your ass. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be a pirate. Put a little on, put a little on the lip and see how you feel. All right. All right. A pea size. I mean, this shit is no joke. Is that too much? No, that's good. Is it's this herpy? No, it's anesthesia. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Oh, I know her. She's a black chick. It's going to anesthetize you. I mean, that lip is going to be... Forget about it. Maybe I'll go tongue then. I want my lip. Go lip and tongue. Yeah, that's going to be something. I just put it on the backside of my ass and my canker. Hold on. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that's cruelty. Like that, <laughs> you're going to get a call. People will go, uh, hey, that's I, no good. I like a dumb pussy. All right. Tell me how you feel. Ooh, You're going to notice man, that. Man, that works quick. It works fast. It's like being at the dentist. I can't talk anymore. It's, it's, it's bad news bears, but I got it on the backside of my tongue, but I got a canker. It, I mean, this thing won't heal because I was on vacation. That cat shit is atrocious. I was on vacay, and I kept eating tacos and marinara and DiGiorno pizza. Yeah. So my reflux has never been worse. Ooh. I got a canker on fire, and uh, all of a sudden I have allergies for the first time in my whole life. Yeah, yeah, you're in a bad way right now, fatty. I'm dying, and the house smells like cat shit. The cat's scratching me, and uh, how's your lips? Cat scratch me. Uh, I'm bad. I sound like a special needs Asian kid. I can't get my uh, tongue to work. But this stuff is this is like quick acting, ten acting. This stuff gets the job done. Oh, yeah, Special Olympics. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Woo, baby. That's the cool thing about cats. They never get offended. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, they're cool cats, but um, I oh, guess. Oh, man, I, I don't mean, like this one bit. It's weird, right? Yeah. It fades quick. Oh, does it? Yeah, because okay, I already feel my canker again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm putting salt water rinse. I'm doing Listerine. I'm doing, uh, what's it called? Peroxide. Oh, man. But it's on that molar. So it's like if you had a cut on your asshole, and then you just kept rubbing a sharp tooth on it. It doesn't heal. Right, right, yeah. I those cankers, you just got to let it happen. I don't know if this this will help your pain, but the peroxide, I think it's got to do its course. Well, I heard you got to keep it as clean as possible. It's like a set for a college kids. You got to really clean right. it up. Ugh. So I've been doing that, but the numbness is good for the podcast, at least. Yes, yes. It, it, it numbs the pain a bit. But anyways, I feel like we got to straighten out this ship and start... Yeah. Correcting course. We're all over the road here. We're overcorrecting, and uh, I got to wipe, wipe this shit off. But, uh, yeah, crazy. I just got back from Baltimore today. So much to talk about. So much has happened. You've been in uh, the Pacific Northwest and uh, some comedy shows, and I've been all over the road selling merch, and I got some stories. Yeah, I'm excited to hear your stories because I, I, got, I got a couple things. But, you know, I have this thing where I was on vacation, and it, I talk about this all the time. It's hard because you're like... I went on vacation, and it was wonderful. I know. I know. It's tough. But a couple things. I mean, I teased it last week. We had to go and surprise Derek. That was the big thing. My best yeah. buddy, Derek, he turned 40. We're getting old. Doesn't it feel uh, like you feel old it's now? Weird. It just comes right. You can't stop it. It just keeps coming. Then you go, oh, that was five years ago? Michael Jackson died when? How old's uh, Alanis Morissette? You know, we're, we're, we're kicking the bucket soon. It's weird because... <laughs> I'm at this age now where I look back on things, and then you remember the age that people were, because everybody seemed 85 when you were young. Like I remember, totally. I'd, I'd come down to New York. I'm looking back at all these comics, like Paul Nardizzi and like Don Gavin. I'm like, wait, so Nardizzi was like 30 years old yeah. when I met him, and, and Don Gavin was like 46. That's crazy. When I met him. I, I thought he was 75. I thought Nardizzi was 50. I thought, you know, Kevin Knox was gay. I, there's all these weird things. And you look back and you're like, oh, I'm older than those guys yes, were then. Exactly. I mean, was that you who told me that the 90s now are what the 60s were to the 90s? Yes. Isn't that bananas? It's crazy. And somebody just said another thing. Like, I mean, Back to the Future, if you went back to 85. the same year... Yeah. Yeah, and they went back to 1955, which is 30 years. So if you made that movie now, they would be going back to 1991. Oh, my God. I was in, you know, 
fourth, fifth grade. It's so weird. Yeah, like I would be at Silence of the Lambs. Is that the movie theater? You right, know, it's, like, right. It's weird. No phones, no internet. What are you, a scientist? There's another movie. I think it's like Hot Tub Time Machine. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. If they were, did that movie now, they'd be going back to like 2004. Yeah. It's all wacky. I know. And I, I can't figure out everybody's ages now. So Yeah. Anyways, it's 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 not fun and it's going to happen to you and you don't think it will, but it will. And it goes by quick, folks. So live it up. Go gay and fuck your dad. I just hope I can be one of these guys that's 105 years old. You know, I'm not into that. Give me give me 88. I'll be happy. 105. Well, you got your mom or your son wiping your ass and you're 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 you're, you're yelling at clouds and eating porridge. You're well, shitting yourself. I mean, Chuck Finn was just talking about his grandpa is 96 and he plays, you know, tennis and, and, and fucks bitches. No. Well, I made up the part about the bitches and the tennis, but the okay. rest is true. All right. <laughs> um, he walks around. He does stuff, I guess. But he's with it. Yeah, he got he can, you know, he can play checkers or whatever. Okay, that's something. I like checkers. Can't Way play better chess. than chess. Chess is stupid. It's too much. It's with the it the, the the Romans played it. All right, it's too much pressure. It's gay. Come on, a rook, a yeah. bishop. What's a rook? What the hell's a bishop? Uh, no, I mean, there's a rookie card. Uh, you sure, know. sure. There's a hook, rook, rooker by crook. I like that movie Hook. With Great the, movie. Spielberg, Run Home Jack. That was fun. Yeah, that was early 90s. I remember I rented that from Blockbuster. Oh, I went to the last Blockbuster. Oh! I was up there. Oh, wow. I used to work at Blockbuster. No kidding. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, really? Yeah, I never heard that. Not a great gig. I was like, I love movies. It'll be so fun. You're basically working in a library because that fucking drop box opens up and all these movies pour in. You're like, ah, you just got to alphabetize. All day is alphabetizing. Yeah, I did that at FYE for your entertainment record store ah. there, and it was the same thing. Alphabetize this and alphabetize that, and you stack the CD, and it's exciting. It is inspiring because you see all these movies that you want, like, oh, I want to be in movies, and yes. then you don't do anything because you're a lazy alcoholic, and then you end up just podcasting for a living 40 hey, years later. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's not bad. Join it's the fine. Patreon. We love you. Clean yes. It up. Join the Patreon. By the way, we're doing another hot gay set yes. tonight. We're filming it. We're going set hopping. And uh, Chuck's going to follow us around and shoot us and then shoot himself. I, I can't wait. This is going to be amazing. Yes. Plus, he's got the stickers. Cool oh, shooting. Oh, stickers. I should have shown up. Oh, the yeah. Is that one? Pull up that sticker. Ah, this is that's fun. an empty sticker. Ah, Hold on. I got it. a sticker here. Look at this. Don't piss off the cat. This is my date book. I go old Whoa. school. Look at that sticker. Can we get a close up of that? Can Come we get on. a shot in there? That's exciting. That's really fun. And here's Notice my the dick. There's my headshot right there. There you go. Yeah. And uh, there it is. There's a dick. And then upside down, it looks like a cat. You see that? No. You don't see it? Look at the ears. Oh, yeah. It's a cat with a dick. Look at that. That's a big cat dick. What do you think of that there? That's pretty good. What's your cat's name? I don't Greg. know. Greg. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> good egg. Greg Allman. But, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so a lot cooking. I want to hear about the last blockbuster. All right. Is it is it just fun now? It's just a kitschy thing. No one's actually like, we got to go to Blockbuster and get some VHSs. It's just whatever. I didn't see the movie, so you probably know more about it I than I do. I didn't see the movie either. Oh, everyone thinks the movie's amazing. I got to watch it, whatever. But So everyone else knows more about it. I just went there. It just looks like a Blockbuster. It's fun. Yeah. And uh, I bought this... They sell movie poster puzzles. Like, it's a puzzle mm. of the movie poster, and it comes in like a VHS, like an old school plastic ah. VHS. And I bought one. They had Clueless, so I bought that, and then we left it in the rental car. Ah! Don't you hate that? I left my sunglasses in, on the Amtrak. I want to kill myself. Not the Blue Blocks. No, those are great. Those are in a case in the, in the, in the safety deposit box, but. I got my. Uh, I have these great sunglasses. I lost them. I just. I hate just the idea of you make a mistake, you never see them again. Now you got to spend a hundred bucks. It's brutal. I, I wish that we could somehow capture the smell of this apartment right now and put it on the Patreon. It's pretty bananas. Uh, this cat can shit out a goose, really bad. But so I went out there. Surprising Derek, his fortieth birthday. Fly to Seattle, rent a car, a little Chevy Spark. Then we drive down to Woodland, Washington, right on the like the border of mm. Oregon or near the border, whatever, on some little river, get a motel, 
It's exciting. And then the next day, so you have all this anticipation. So you're in Seattle and you're like, I usually I go to Derek's house. There's all this nervousness. Uh-huh. I'm texting with his wife. His wife changed my name in her phone. Wow. To her sister's name. Oh, that's kind of sexy. So there's like all these texts coming up because it comes up. It's hooked up to her car. Right. So all day it's like, it's like alley text, alley text. And he's like, boy, what's going on with your sister? And she's like giggling. Like, I don't know. I think uh-huh. she's breaking up with her husband. He's like, oh, that's crazy. And it, it just keeps being more and more texts. And of course, she's like, why is... Your sister sending pictures of Joe's dick. This right. feels weird. And you're not a liar. This must have been a little challenging for you. Extremely challenging. It was the the challenger explosion because mentally I keep, challenged. I keep talking to him and I have to go. Yeah, no, I can't wait. And I'm, I keep coming so close because his mother was going to be there. We're sharing a house with his mom, mm. and which is also kind of hot. Yeah. I'm looking she? back. I'm like, we we went to the beach together one time. And looking back, she's like probably was 40. Ooh. So back then, I was like, ah, there's some old bitch with us. Sure. But looking back, I'm like, she's like younger than my wife is now. Isn't that weird? <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. It's all backwards. But So I was excited that, and he, he calls me. He's like, yeah, my, it's crazy. My mother's staying with me. She's got night terrors. She screams sometimes in her sleep. Oh, my God. And so I'm like... I have to share a house with this person, but as I'm about to say it, I'm like, I can't believe I have to, uh, I have to, I have to go. I gotta, I gotta call you later. Ah, uh, And yeah. he's like, what? And I'm like, nothing. I'll see you later. So I had a bunch of moments like that. I see. So then I got hit with this. What do you think about this? The night before, Sarah's best friend lives up there. We meet up with her. We're walking around the beach in Tacoma. There's beautiful parts of Tacoma. Did you know that? I like Tacoma. Tacoma's nice. That Mount Rainier just stares at you oh, like an old creepy man. Crystal clear day. I've never seen it so clear. We were in Browns Point, which sounds like the tip of my dick. Sure. Gorgeous neighborhood. We're walking around, and I got hit with this guilt. And Tell me if you feel me on this. I'm sitting there, and I, I, I have the worst guilt because I'm like, we flew in here to surprise him, and I started to feel like, who am I to surprise somebody? I'm oh, the surprise. Come on. I'm the birthday gift. Happy birthday. It's me. Yeah. What are you going to Pl- jump out of a cake with panties on? It's not the same. Well, plus, he's expecting vacation A. He's like, all right, uh-huh. this is nice. I got my kids, my wife, my mom. I'm going to lay low. And he's got a big work thing going on. He's about to move. So in my mind, I'm picturing going, surprise. And he's like, oh, hey. I, I, I don't question that he loves me. He loves me. I love him. We have a good time. Sure. But all of a sudden, it's, you know, you're preparing for one thing. And I, maybe I'm projecting. I don't want a surprise party. It's a lot on you. You got to bring it. Oh, my God. Oh, this is great. They did all that work. What if you're not into it? Exactly that. And I have separate me's. I got the family me yeah, where oh, yeah. I wear sweatpants and I jerk off in my dad's face and then I got to hang out with you where it's Seinfeld references right, and we're right. talking about, you know, cancel culture and we kiss on the lips and we check out ladies but sure. so he's prepping for hanging out with mom and kids hang Yeah. and now all of a sudden he's got to deal with saying the n-word and going hiking hang. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, worlds are colliding you can't have n-word with mom. Well, she's from Boston Yeah, I don't know. Paula Dean's a mom so who knows? <laughs> um so I just had this guilt of like, what if I'm ruining his trip? What if he's like, oh, all right, I guess that's exciting. And then I have this feeling of like, isn't this just for us, his wife and I? Like, we feel good. We're excited. We're whispering. We're actually robbing oh, him of joy. Interesting. Because for the last three months, he could have been like, oh, nice. At least I'll get to see Joe and right, Sarah. I'll right. have a good time. So we're robbing him of the fun anticipation. Yes. And we're like... Isn't it great? We 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 planned this thing behind yeah. your back. Yes, yes. This is for you. It not feels like him. it's for us. And I'm like, oh. And then I almost I almost just blew it on purpose and acted like it was an accident. Ah, uh, so there was less pressure. Yes, because I felt bad. I wanted to be like, hey, just so you know, you're gonna see us tomorrow. We're gonna be there. But then I had this thought. I'm still thinking about me. I'm making it about me. Ah. Before it was about him. I'm like, what about his wife, who this is her big birthday gift? Uh-huh. This is her surprise. She came up with this idea. She flew. Well, I paid for myself, but she said, well, you can come out here. So this is her b- birthday present is, I brought in your best friend yeah. to be here with you on your birthday. And she's excited. So I'm like, what am I doing? I'm ruining her thing. Even if it's about her. All right. Well, it's about her. Yeah. This is not you. You're, you're the good guy. You're the gift. I'm the gift. So I felt all this stress. I was coming apart. 
And then it's finally time. So her and I have been planning this for months. She's lying. I'm lying. The mother knows. Mm. His daughter knows. Ooh. Who's like my niece. She's eight, but she's old enough now that she's like, she's excited to be in on the secret. I don't know. I don't trust these kids. Well, it's hard to trust a kid, but. They read it on Fogel. I got to say. I remember being a kid, and I remember my dad's 30th birthday. How weird is that? What? Jesus Christ. I my know. dad's ever celebrated a birthday in his life. I've never seen him look at a cake. Well, they had a big surprise birthday party for him, and I was with them, and everyone jumped out and yelled surprise. And I remember being like, you didn't tell me? What is this? They didn't tell you? No. Well, I was like six. They knew you'd spill the beans I there. was her. I guess I was seven. But I was like hurt because I was like, oh, they kept it from me. I'm an asshole. So they told the eight-year-old. They didn't tell the four-year-old. Mm. Little Joe. Ah. Uh, I know it's sweet, but... That's nice. So it comes time for the day. I'm all ner- all day. I'm nervous. I'm shaking. I'm excited. I'm gay. Her and I are texting. And I'm, then I'm like, I think he knows because he was talking to his mother. Mm. And he's like, should I get vaccinated? And I think I haven't told this in the last week's episode or maybe the Patreon. But he's, he's like, should I get vaccinated? She's like, well, is Joe and Sarah vaccinated? And he was like, what? Oh. Oh, the old bag's going to blow it. Yeah, he was like, I, I don't know. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I was thinking about them for some reason. But he's an idiot. So he was like, oh, all right, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, I think he knows. And, and then we were driving down that day. And his wife's texting me. She's like, he does not know. I'll tell you that right oh, now. Great. There's no okay. way he knows. I can tell by the way he's talking. Everyone's excited. So then. How was the reaction? I'm dying. Well, we get there about four hours early because we flew in a day early, drove halfway. Okay. So we get down there earlier. It takes them seven hours because they're driving from Jesus. Seattle to Bend. It's a long ride. And then that's the other thing I'm worried about. I'm like, he's in the car ride for seven hours with an eight-year-old, a four-year-old, his mother, and his wife. Oh. He might be homicidal by the time he gets that's here. the seventh circle of hell. Brutal. So he's driving down. So we're supposed to get the pizza. His wife says, I ordered pizza online. It's going to be delivered. So when we get there, there'll be pizza arriving. Okay. So we go and order the pizza in person. That's lunch. It's a ton of pi- three pizzas, 48 wings, six salads. Woo! Never got the money for it, by the way. It was about 300 bucks. Jesus. That's I another know. gift. I know. It's crazy. I got the receipt. But yeah. so we sit there. The food's taking forever. She's like, okay, we just arrived. We're in the house. I'm like, all right, we're waiting on the pizza, which is like two minutes away. Mm. So we're getting nervous. And she's like, how, how close is the pizza? What's going on? And I'm like, just shut up, you fucking piece of shit. I'm, I'm getting the pizza. The yes. pizza's not ready. Pizza's coming. Relax, whore. I'll be over there. So we're texting. And, and then all of a sudden she goes, he's leaving. He's leaving. All caps. He's going to the store. I'm like, going to the store? What's we're the store? Pizza. He wants to get beer for his pizza. Ah. Which is understandable. What is he, moving furniture? Well, she's like, "What? you can't leave right now. Or pizza's about to come. He's like, I know. I want beer with my pizza. Makes sense. So she's like, now that you get it after. And he's like, why would I get it after? No, I want, she's going to ruin it. I want pizza with the beer. So his mother goes with them to try to, you know, distract him. Oh, she can't act. Everybody knows that. Well, the pizza place is right across from the supermarket. So we're waiting outside for the pizza because it's curbside pickup because of COVID. Yeah. So we're sitting out there and Sarah's like, is that him? Is that him? And I'm like, and now I'm on the phone with his wife. And my niece and nephew, and my nephew doesn't know what's going on. He's like, it's Uncle Joe. Hey, Uncle Joe. And I'm like, shut up, you little piece of shit. We got a kid. And so the the daughter is going, hey, why don't you come over here and hide behind the counter? And like, this is the plan. We're sticking to the plan. We're all fighting. Oh, my God. This is a a nightmare. And I'm like, what's the car look like? And they're like, you know our car. It's a big white car. And then he drives by. We look right at him. He's looking Ah! over at us. Sarah dives on the ground. I swear to God. She oh, just wow. jumped on the ground. Like, like a war It started vent. rolling. We put our masks on. I have my hat down. But I'm wearing that Iowa shirt with the birds. It's uh, so distinctive. That's your shirt. Nobody's got the Iowa bird shirt. You I got, got the Iowa right. bird shirt. Oh, God. Oh, God. Watch out for oh, the Oh, my Christ on Christmas. Cat. All right. He's, he loves that tea. What do you got there? Black? Green? What's what's going it's on there? It's a green Peppermint? tea. I left the bags in too long. Uh, he it? hates the bags. I think something's up with the bags. Bad uh, bags. Look at these tails. It looks like a grandfather's eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a, what's his name? Nietzsche's uh, mustache. Nietzsche? That's it, a pull. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh, my God. A Christmas Christ. You can hear somebody in the hallway. May, call the cat, would you? <laughs> Ah! He's just roaming around, getting a feel for the joint. Oh, I gotta wrap this up. We're going too long. For no, no. I, I want to hear what happened. She dove in the bushes. All you right. fucked her in the ass. So Sarah dives in the ground. I do a quick flip turn around because I gotta hide the birds. But he was looking right over at us. But she's like, I think he saw me. I swear to God, he saw me. But I'm like, even if he saw us, 
He's not going to go, there's Joe and Sarah. He's going to be like, there's a there's a nerd and a, and a hotter chick than he is. You I know, know what I mean? you're pretty distinct of the type two, the herp, the canker. It's obvious. I know, but you're if you're... 20 feet tall, you're a giraffe. If you're cruising by, if you're just cruising by and you're out in... I mean, we're in the woods of Oregon. We're in central Oregon. He's not... It, wouldn't you just be like, ah, that looked like so-and-so. I can spot you... Uh, from space, fatty. I mean, those choppers, the noggin, the glasses, the wacky shoes. Come on, it's a it's a wrap. Well, you're hurting my feelings, but he didn't recognize us. He, okay, he pulls okay. into the supermarket. So now we're waiting for the pizza. He's across the street. We get the pizza. They go order up. It's Joe. I go I give me the pizza, you dumb whore. And we get the pizza. Curbside, like a prostitute. Then we get in the car. And by the way, everyone's looking at us because we're diving behind bushes. We're wearing masks. I got a fake hat on. I'm wearing an eye patch. My father's right. gay. Yeah, he's so. got blackface. He's got camo on. What? <laughs> Picked you behind a bush like uh, the guy in Platoon. <laughs> it's complete insanity. So now we get in the car. Now, this is fun. We both are wearing our masks. I have my hat pulled down because now we're staking out because we're like, all right, we'll watch the car go by. Once we see the car go by, we'll give it a beat, and then we'll drive in behind him. And she's like, don't pull in behind him. Let him get in the house. Let him settle down. I would let him get in the house. So she says that. So now we're watching every car. I'm looking up the road going, is that them? Is this? Th-? And it's fun because I feel like fucking... Uh, you know, Johnny Utah and yeah. uh, the other guy eating meatball subs and drinking lemonade. I'm so cold, Johnny. That's the uh, blood leaving your body. <laughs> um, that was a good voice. I've never oh, heard that voice. Hey, that was my Keanu. You're on today. Wow. Look at that. Uh, but anyways, so then I'm like, I don't know where they are. What kind of beer are they buying? They've been in there half hour. The pizza's getting cold. By the way, we're all starving. None of us have eaten. The kids haven't eaten all day. They're fucking each other in the ass. I'm 69 with Sarah because I'm starving. <laughs> So <laughs> I gotta eat that box. Finally, I'm like, where are they? What the fuck? And I get a text. He's in the driveway. I'm like, what? We're staring at the parking lot. She's like, he must take in the back way. There's a oh, back way. The back way. That's anal. He's showing his mother the anal way. So then, all right. So now we're like, okay, he's home. We got the food. Let's go. So now I'm literally shaking. My heart is pounding. We've been building up for months. I'm afraid he's going to hate me. I'm afraid I'm gay. I'm afraid he never this, liked me to begin with. This is a lot, yeah. For what? This is a big moment here. A lot is behind this. So I, I'm shaking, and I pull in there. Now I'm trying to, like, hide the car. They're Jesus. distracting him. This is like SEAL Team 6. It's crazy. So Sarah's, like, holding the pizza above her face, like, uh, <laughs> you know, like Elaine trying to avoid uh, Frank Costanza. Sure. So we walk in. I can drop you like a bag of dirt. We ring the doorbell. He opens the door, and I go, pizza. Oh, that's great. So exciting, but I'm so nervous. I'm not even enjoying it. And right away, he goes into straight shock, because we're all like, he's going to cry. He's going to break down crying. Yeah. No cry. He just goes, what? Wow. And I'm like, we're here. Happy birthday. And then like his mom and wife and daughter all have like the camera going. And so now I just feel like a doofus because I'm like, I'm on camera. Yeah. Can we get that on the Patreon? Maybe. I'll get that, some clips. That would be bad. I'd love to see that non-reaction. So I go, happy birthday. And he really is like shocked. He's like, what? What? <laughs> that was the whole reaction. So then I put the pizza in. I give him a hug. I say, I love you. Happy birthday. And he's like, this is insane. And it wasn't like a big like, I wanted like a black funeral. Right. Like a, whoa, get the shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but he just went, oh, my God, this is crazy. Yeah. And then little Joey, he doesn't know what's going on. He just goes, ah, I guess Uncle Joe's here. So he goes, let me give you a tour of the house. Huh. So almost immediately, I'm upstairs, you know, fucking his son going, oh, wow, there's a, there's a, there's a bed, there's a piano. Yeah. Because kids, <laughs> they don't know any better. Like, the kid no, has no... No, he's fucking you. He has no, <laughs> he has no concept of space. He doesn't know that we flew six hours uh, and drove seven hours. He's just yes. like, I guess he's here. Right. Let me show you the house. So within like 30 <laughs> seconds of being there, I'm like upstairs putting on socks and changing underwear. Sure, sure. Um, but Gotta get out of those wet panties. So he was excited. I think, I think he was excited. I think he had a good time. I don't know, but I was terrified, but he was like, I was shocked. That's great. You pulled off. Can I say this? I know you wanted the big to-do. You wanted the black guys seeing magic. You know, they go nuts. They run around the block. But- I think that's how you know that's a genuine friend. He's a real friend. He got a real reaction there. He didn't fake it and go, oh, like an orgasm with my girlfriend. You know, it was just, hey, this is what's going on. You flew here. Uh, I like this reaction. I think it's more real. It was real. And also, we explained the next day we were talking. We have a relationship where, first of all, we talk all the time. So it's not like I haven't seen you in three years. We got to catch up. We talk a lot. And also... 
he's like, we just pick up. We're not yes, those kind of some friends yes. you have that you're like, what have you been up to? Who are you fucking? What's your life? How are your parents? Yeah. We're more like we're in the same town and then you just scoop it right up and you pick up where you left off. So yes. he was kind of like, OK, great. That's a real pal there. You don't have to fake this. Uh, oh, what do you an ovation or whatever you right. call that. Best pal, so it ended up being a great hang, and I got more stories, but I got I got to kick it over. But man, it was a relief to finally be there, to have the lies done with, and he also was like, "How did you get here? What are you? What is this?" Right. And, uh, so that was, it was a, it was quite thrilling, quite exciting. I'm gonna sneeze. I got allergies for the first time in my life. Sneeze Father's it up good. there, sloppy jalopy. Let it out. Ah! Ooh, that's a dad sneeze. Jeez, oh. Louise. God, that damn. was a hon- Do you ever have that? My dad, if he sneezed, you could hear it in Kuwait. It was like. Ah! <laughs> like, what are you doing? No one does that on the planet, but he's got to sneeze. My, I got one square to spare. My he mother sneezes square. like that. What? It's a, I can do it. It goes, I issue. That's oh. how it goes. At least it's kind of feminine, at least. It's a high pitch. My dad, it's it's, it's like a roar. Rawr! I hate it. <laughs> That's how I just sneezed, I think. That's a what? That's how I just sneezed, I think. Yeah, you got a dad sneeze, but you know when your dad sneezes, you go, oh, yeah, he's the, uh, the alpha here. I'm not fucking with that guy. Well, I, I'm telling you right now, I, I mean, I've never had allergies my entire life, and evidently it's high in New York. This is one of the top five worst cities. I went to Seattle, had nothing out there, mm. never had a problem, but... Uh, I don't know. When I, when I, I think when I was a kid, but you said you can get allergies later in life. When I was a kid, I was sniffing paint and fucking you know, mud bugs and sitting in the backyard, pond water, the whole thing. So I think I've killed all that. I'm immune. Well, every seven years, they say your allergies can change. You can pick them up later in life or you lose them later in life. And also because uh, of climate change, there's something with mm. the trees earlier and more or something. But I've been going to pollen.com like a nerd. What? And, what are you, Jewish? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all of a sudden. <laughs> You've got Woody Allen out here. You're going to be fucking an Asian girl. Well, I mean, I, I wish. But... Uh, <laughs> The other day, I, I walked from the stand to the side. I couldn't stop sneezing. I had like 40 sneezes. It was Ooh, so bad. I'm I sticking a leg up my ass, and I'm doing some nasal shit someone told me about. I, I, I put honey in my, my butthole. Yeah, yeah, uh, that I, sounds good. I don't know what's happening, but it's, it's bad news bears. Maybe it's the giant cat shit over there that's yeah. triggering me. I think we're all alert to that turd. But uh, all right, all right. Let me let me uh, throw some stuff in your taint and see what sticks to your pubes. What, what time is it, by the way? We have no... T- the oh, problem yeah. With- I know, but what, how long have we been going? Is it are we are we done? Is it the beginning? Is it the end? Thirty eight minutes with the with the app, with the, uh, the promo at the beginning. Oh, Jeez, Jesus! I thought well, we, we should do the mid roll. Yeah, we yeah, got it. We the were mid. at ten. Yeah. Man, that flew by. That birthday or or surprise thing really jizzed in my mouth. Well, I think it was the cat too, and uh, the yeah. other thing. And all right, let's <clears throat> talk about uh, Sheath. Aha. Uh-huh. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath. This is our probably our favorite sponsor of all time. I don't know if we're allowed to say that. Happen to be wearing camo sheath. The camo is big. My Love wife. Camo. I think you say camis, by the way. Ooh. I had a military friend. He said, it's not camo. It's You're a homo. It's camis. Cami. Oh, wow. And, well. and Robert, he can tell us because uh, he is military. a military guy. That's right. So I think you say camis, the real guy. You don't Cammy. say camo. I've never heard cami. That's the chick I blew once. Cameo. Uh, well, Robert, uh, you message us. Too. You let us know, but... Because this is not coming from me. This is my friend who's a Marine. And he's like, it's camis. Put All the right. camis on. I, I don't know. Who uh, knows? I mean, he's, a, he's an idiot, maybe. Maybe it's like Houston and Houston Street. Could be. I'm not sure. But anyways, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. We love Sheath Underwear. You're wearing it right now. I might be wearing it right now. I think I am wearing it right now. Wait. Ooh. No, this well, is that's something, something else. Karate Kid? What is that Fire riff, riff Raff. Riff Raff. That might be something different. I don't think that's going to bode that's, well for the ad. <laughs> that's a different spot. Well, every once in a while, i got to wear a different pair. I only have six pairs of sheaths. Send us some more there, Robbie. Yeah, we love Robbie. it. But anyways, the idea for sheaths came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton, who's a huge fan of us. He's a fan of Skanks. He's a, he's a, he's a real comedy podcast fan. Oh, yeah. We love this guy. He's so kind. He sends us all kinds of stuff. The underwear is killer. I've talked about it so much. It's sexy underwear, especially the cami, cam-o, cam-a. I don't know. Maybe it's like the N-word where they can say it. Could be, but uh, 
Anyways, it's sexy underwear, and we got I got a sports bra for Sarah, which Ooh. is sexy to me. I, I cannot recommend this enough. It's got a space for your dick and balls. I actually do think this is sheath. I think I have the. I think it it's might, a riffraff it sheath. It looks like a sheath uh, color palette. It's got the ball bag thing. It's so exciting. Tell them a little more. Tell them. I love sheath. I wear them every day. I'm wearing it right now. I forgot we were even recording. So this is a genuine wear, and uh, I feel like the the further the, the the more the races are coming together. The more our balls and dick are, are separating and segregating, and it's a good thing. They've been together too long. They're pent up. They're tight. They're sweaty. Give them a little breathing room. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. Queef it up. Tuesdays with Stories <clears throat> is also brought to you by Blue Chew. <laughs> Folks, I, I was telling you before the uh, episode, I, I didn't have, I was out with my family and friends, so I wasn't having sex because I was with family. And yes. I got home and just immediately, <laughs> right away, I mean, I was, I was quick. and uh, Right to the gash. So I, I love sex, but sometimes it's not always that way. Sometimes you're having sex over and over again. Sometimes you haven't had it in a while, and the and the lady's a little unattractive. Sure. So you need some Blue Chew. You got that right, baby. Blue Chew is a fine product. Its tablets offer the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. If you don't like swallowing pills, this is for you. I don't like swallowing pills at all. I hate it. Mm. It works fast. You can take it day or night, and you'll save a ton of money compared to the name brands. Yes. Blue Chew is an online prescription service. That means no doctor's office or waiting in line. We all know how annoying that can be. Nobody wants to go to the doctor. I hate having anything on my counter. It makes me sick to my stomach. I'm with you, Fanny. So this, you can go online. They ship it in a discreet package right to your door. I know you're a fan. I know you know how to get it. Love the BC. I, I keep one sometimes in my little weird pocket just in case I bump into a plus size. And uh, it works quick. It tastes good. It goes down easy. And it, it's never failed. I love it. No kooky side effects. And it's all made in the USA. Another one with that. Take that, Russia. You with your limps. Sputnik. Special offer just for the gays. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our promo code TUESDAYS. Just pay $5 in shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-CHEW.com. Promo code TUESDAYS to try it for free. Come on. You can't go wrong. A free boner. All right. All right. So, I'm done. I'm passing the torch to a new generation of Americans. Yeah, I go crazy. That was a hell of a tale, though. I felt like I was there. I could smell the pizza. I could smell your wife's veg, the whole thing. So I loved it. Uh, now, here's, you know, I was just in L.A. We haven't talked in a while, so I got a couple back things. Yeah, hit me with the back stuff. Well, I did all these pods, which I know I covered, you know, Whitney, Segura, Marin, all these, Santino, you name it, uh, the other guy. And... I stayed in this hotel. I got a shitbox motel. Everybody made fun of me. Now, the hotel in L.A. has parking, which was free, and that's pretty rare. Right. But they have limited spots. Oh. So if you don't get it in time, you just have to find a parking spot on the street. And you know, L.A., they, they, they're they Hitlers with those parking spots. You got to keep an eye on that meter. You got to have You got to check every sign, uh, Tuesday to Sunday, street cleaning, uh, anti-Semitism. I can't keep up. So I couldn't find a spot. I got, I went out drinking one night with a couple people, got home at like four in the morning, no spots, obviously. So I couldn't find a spot on the street because I want to sleep in, you know, it's four in the morning. I'm drunk. I'd like to, uh, get a nap in, you know, get, get some hours, but they're all the spots you're taking, and I know if I park on the street, I'm going to oversleep. Exactly. If that meter started at 8 a.m., I'll never make it. Right. So I had to make a game-time decision. I'm half in the bag. I'm half hard. I'm dr drinking and driving. So the whole city in L.A. is just dead. It's just me out there looking like, what the hell should I do? Should I try to double park? Should I just try to park on a meter and set my alarm? That's never going to work. Found a random vacant lot. Oh, boy. Completely empty. A and vacant I, L.A. lot. Yeah. I don't like where this is going. I know. It was about a half a block away from the hotel, and I could see the lot from my hotel window. Okay. So I said, you know what? I'm putting it here. Fuck oh, it. Boy. I'm putting the car here. God uh, damn it. I'm going to bed. Oh, God. Biggest mistake of my life. I don't like where it's going. Yeah. I don't like the idea. And, and I, I think you're better off parking in a, a metered spot and just paying the ticket at this point. Oh. Ah. Oh, but what about the towing? Who knows if 
I, I have I a toe. No, you're probably right, though. I probably you probably need a couple tickets to get a toe. Well, I'll go back to to my pal Derek. My wedding day, the actual wedding, when we went to courthouse, he just parked on my street and he said, "I don't give a fuck. I'll take the ticket." And he still got the ticket. He's got it framed ah. uh, above his uh, porn stack, and it's just sitting there. He never paid it. Just goes, "What the fuck? I'll pay sixty five bucks. Who gives a shit?" That's true because you get a garage and it's fifty or whatever. Why not just do do the street with the ticket? Exactly. But the toe is big because you're in L. A. And all if it gets towed to you know Santa Monica or some right, shit, you're right, bum fuck, and then you got to go spend a day. Over there, and you don't—they don't tell you where they brought it. Wouldn't yeah, that be nice care. if there's a sticker that said, "Hey, we took it here, Dickless. You're on your own." Well, they s- see you as a bag of shit, right? They're like you shouldn't have, boo, boo, boo. I know, but at least let me know where it's going. Now you got to call the. Hey, did you get a uh, hot pink wagon that says uh, "Dick Mobile"? And they're like, "Shut up." So here's the clinker. I go back up to the room, and you know, I look out the window. I'm like, "All right, there's the car. Here we go. Let's try to get some shut eye." I don't sleep a wink because uh, I gotta uh, just keep my eye on the car. I'm just like I'm picturing the tow truck, some burly guy with a you know his crack hanging out, uh, bald hair, and a swastika and towing my car. Jesus. I didn't sleep a wink. It was the worst day of my life. You gotta get a wink. I got no wink and the hangover, and I had all these big like Corolla and all these big pods the next day. I was with Salacuse. He's like, "You look like shit." I'm like, "I'm on fumes. I'm dying here." But you gotta do it. I suck it up, and I did them all, and it was a nightmare. Wait, so was the car there and everything? I had never moved. Oh, okay. Well, the car worked out at least. It you got worked no out. wink, but you got no dink in the ass at least. Yeah, but I would have paid 68 clams just to get a little Aziz. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not not a big deal. I sucked it. That's the cool thing about having a shitty day is it will end. Yeah. You know what I mean? You always go, oh, this sucks. I hate myself. It's the worst day of my life. But the next day will be better. You just got to get through it. There's no better feeling. I think I have a cat here on my tongue. There's no better feeling to me than you have a sore throat and allergies and herpes and a big forehead. And then you get home and you put on this program your wife and you are watching. You rub her feet and you come in your own underwear sheath. And you watch your program and you go to bed. I mean, it just it feels nice to go, all right, you know what? That day's behind us. Yes. But do you ever get this? I'm going to bum everyone out. Sometimes I go, well, one day closer to death. I think about it. that all the time. You got to use every day, baby. Yeah. Because they're limited. And we act, you know what you said once? It just put a lawn dart right up my cooter. Oh, boy. You said, uh, we only have like 30 summers left or something, whatever it was. That's a Bobby Kelly bit. Ah, shit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, the great, you know, he looks like Buddha. You know, uh, it, it, when you say it like that, you know, I'm like, oh, I'll live till 90, 85, whatever. That'll be fine. And when you're like, you have this many summers, you're like. Well, I feel that way. I, I've talked about this. Maybe you're conflating the two, but I feel this way with my wife. When I'm gone for a week, I'm like, we have limited days. Yes. I'm like, I just had six days. No wife. I feel that way with my buddy's kids. I'm like. Well, I go every six months to see these kids. It's half their life. But if I could spin that into a positive queef, you probably have a less likely chance of getting divorced or breaking up because you're not. I mean, these nine to five cunts, they just see each other every day. They got to eat a shitty TV dinner and have bad gay sex. And then they go back to work. Yeah, you need separate time. And you can't live your life thinking about, you know, keeping score and going, I only had this many days, that many days. But right, you got to have right. it in the back of the mind to go, let me book a flight because, you know, I got to see my niece, my nephew, my buddy, my aunt, my uncle, my asshole. Yeah. Because, you know, you don't want to go your whole life not looking at it inside your own asshole no no it's a treasure trove of um, just cornucopia of, of visuals back there but that's the cool thing about podcasting i think a, maybe a reason it's so popular like people podcast is almost beating tv at this point maybe it is beating tv i think so I, I, like does anyone watch the tonight show but like look at the views uh, like a, a rogan gets or a theo vaughn or whatever it is well, well we essentially are tv now because now yes. I, this is why I figured out recently, because I only watched it on my phone. I never used my computer, and I, I watch Netflix on the TV. But now people throw YouTube up on the television. On the television. So people watch this, us, right now on a big screen TV and they for eat an hour. dinner and, and eat out their uh, their uncle. So, But my point is, I think conversation, we, we kind of communicate. People used to just sit around together like for hours and hours, play P-Knuckle or drink a beer on the porch or whatever. Because, you know, you had so much time. And then there wasn't Uber and Netflix and all this shit. And I don't think people do that as much now. So I think listening to a conversation is almost kind of cathartic and, and it, it brings you back to 
what we're supposed to be doing, maybe. Absolutely. Well, with social animals. That's why I, I feel refreshed. I was out in Oregon with the family and, and sitting in a circle. Yes. And every night we had family dinner and we played Rose Seed Thorn, where you talk about the highlight, the low light, and what you're looking forward to from the day. That's what it's all about. And uh, it was just beautiful. And this is what I think about all the time. I'm like, I should move to Seattle. I, I love know. these people. I want to be with them. I love them. I, you know, the kids call me Funkle Joe. They look uh, me in the eye. We have one on one time, and he's uh, like, "It's like a four year old." He's like, "You ever eat this?" And I'm like, "I have eaten." We're having like a real conversation, wow. and I feel I'm never happier in my whole life. But is it nice to keep it special? You know, you don't want ice cream every day there, Dick Cheese. Well, that's the thing, and you can see it with the parents because the parents are like, all right, yes, sit down, yes, you fucking idiot. Exactly. And to me, I'm like, everything they say is hilarious, but I'm like, oh, they spend every minute with this piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the kid sucks. But grass is greener is always a thing, but that's why it's good to have variety. That's right. the key. These guys who do the same hum-dum job every day with the same shitty commute, the plus-size wife, the bad meal, the movie, the horrible sex, the bad curtains, the weird bedspread it sucks well but here's the here's the other thing though is i wouldn't be living in the house with them but i'd see them every weekend That's i a see lot. i pick them up I, I get 20 minutes here half hour there so it's tricky but it rains in seattle what are we gonna do a zoom podcast no one wants to watch the zoom people podcast. hate the zoom the cat's missing you it wouldn't work yeah so they should move here all right so i had a fun uh, on the way out of la la was just such a whirlwind and i'm glad i did it because it you know it was productive but that's a lot of work. You got to just put your head down and hustle. But uh, Jesus Christ, what are you doing a shimmy? I had to, my jeans were riding up my ass. Ah, okay. Well, the ankle's back. Mine too. But uh, I had a fun experience at the airport, which you rarely hear. So I'm leaving LA to go back to New York, and I go to LAX, and I'm in the woo woo. You know the, the hands, the, the hands up. Ah, don't yeah. shoot. Yeah, yeah, the woo woo, and uh, you know the whoa whoa, the X ray thing, uh -huh. and it's this big like younger black guy with dreadlocks. He's the TSA guy, and I come out. And he's like, whoa 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 whoa, what do you got in here? And, like I looked at the screen, it's all red right here. Like I got a you know a conjunctivitis or gonorrhea or whatever. <laughs> so I was like, oh that's weird. I'm you know I'm just wearing sheath over here, you know. And he's like, go back in, go back in. I'm like, all right, woo woo woo. Again, I'm getting cancer, whatever. And I come out and says it on again. He's like, something's going on with your, your junk there. What, do you got a plate in your dick? What's going on? And I was like, no, this is now, I travel every week. I've never had this before in my life. And he's like, well, this is weird. So he's like, I got to pat you down. And I was like, well, I got a huge dick. I said, Joe, I'm just trying to like fuck with the guy. And he, said, he goes, don't do that. Don't do that. And I thought he was mad. And he goes, it ain't bigger than mine. <laughs> We oh this, wow! We had this huge laugh in the in the woo woo. Oh wow! That's and amazing. It was great, and uh, I thought he was mad, like like a teacher, like don't do that, oh, young man. Wow. That's inappropriate. And he goes, and I and he was probably right. This guy was huge and uh, African American, so yeah, I'm I could, sure I picked it up in the accent. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I I think I nailed it, by the way, just like the Keanu. But it sounded uh, like Aretha Franklin, Blues Brothers. Don't you do that. <laughs> Don't you blaspheme it. You better think. <laughs> Great yeah. film. Good film. Good lady. Good dick. And uh, yeah, so we had this moment. We had a bond. And it was like, you know, BLM and the height of the Chauvin trial. And me and this uh, black guy are, are blowing each other in the middle of a TSA. you got to love a black blonde. Every time I have a black blonde. Bond, bond, a bond. I said bond. blonde. I meant to say bond. But well, a black blonde is sexy, too. That's fun. And we might have a black bond before you know it. 007. Oh, yeah. Idris Elba. Yeah. But... Uh, so that was fun, and so then I go, here's my thing. I travel with this away case, and I like my away, but I'm so sick of opening my goddamn dildo package, and I got to pull the the, uh, the, the computer out for the, for the security. Why on earth don't you have pre-check? It's retarded. I'm a lazy it's retarded. Cunt. I, I'm not even going to try to be funny. I'm going to get serious. Oh, God. You're a fucking idiot. Don't I don't you do get that. It. I just... <laughs> Go online. It's 85 bucks for seven years. I mean, you travel twice a week, every week. I thought you had this to go to the stupid. airport and uh, shit in the shoe or whatever it is, and you got to talk to the guy, and it's a whole appointment. I don't want to go to the airport when I'm not flying. It's all over, Jerry. Just call him up. <laughs> Just, well, you go. You can go. Either there's an office in mid. It's like 23rd and 8th. It ah. takes you an hour. You go get a burrito. You have a beer. You go in there. You give a thumbprint. You take a photo. You kiss a guy in the lips. You give him a check for 85 bucks. It's pre-check. You don't take your computer out or your shoes off what? ever. It's a shorter line. You never take anything out. You All walk right. right in there with your shoes on and you save 
three minutes for years. You don't have to worry about it. Three minutes, a headache that I hate. I open it up. I got six mushroom caps falling out of my bag and a, and a magnum condom. It's a nightmare. Everybody sees my panties and my my skid marks. I hate it. And you never do the woo woo. Even when no you tell woo-woo. the story of the woo woo, I'm like, what are you doing in a woo woo? <laughs> you don't do the woo woo. No woo woo. I haven't done a woo woo since I was poo poo in my pants. I mean, I mean, this is crazy. I thought everybody did the woo. I didn't know Precheck got away from the woo. No, no woo. I mean, you got to go uh, Precheck. It's I'm crazy. Pre-check. Go tomorrow. I'm going Just tomorrow. Make a day. Just go do it. It'll change your life. All right. No more woo woo. You're out of my life, woo. I'm, I'm sick of it. I already got cancer and radioactive balls. So now I what I do now, my, my way around is I carry a backpack with my bag. So you got the personal backpack with the computer, the zoom mic, the you know, the double sided dildo, whatever it is. But I'm this is new, so I'm not a backpack guy. Okay. So now I'm in the airport and I'm like, all right, put my bag down, put my backpack down, go get a steal some stuff out of the Hudson News and some nuts and a cliff bar. <laughs> and I come back and I'm like, All right, now time to get on the plane. I grab my wheelie. I'm going on the plane. I forgot the backpack. Oh, I forgot the backpack with my computer. That's the most expensive thing I own, and I have a classic car. So now I'm like, woo, baby. Look, nobody's on my row. I'm in like, you know, 28B. I'm I'm suited up. I got my movie picked out, the headphones in. I got my Playgirl ready. And they're like, okay, folks. And I'm like, ah, the backpack. It just hit me. And I run out of there like it's a... Flight 93, and I go, whoa, 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 whoa. I left my backpack in the terminal, and they're like, oh, they hate you already, and they, they want to say no to everything at the airport. Have you, do you feel that? Yeah, well, I think I get it because it's got to be a, a, an operation. Sure, you know, you got to sure. shuffle them in one at a time, get the bags in, put yeah. the bomb on, and, and get out of there. Right. So I did some fast talking. I was like, I got nitrate and plutonium in there and the 80, 88 miles an hour gigawatts. And they were like, all right, all right. I was like, take my wallet, take my wife, whatever it is. And I run out through the, the what is that? Jet stream? What do you call that thing? Hold on, I got it. They segway. Jetway? Jetway? The jetway. Is that right, Chuck? It, I fell off the jetway again. Jetway. Oh, yeah, I jetway. Think. That's dumb and dumber. It's Rhode it's, Island. It, oh, yeah, it's not catching my clit. I don't no, know why. I think it's jetway. called a, uh, uh, Seg- a tube. No tube. Tube is no good. Is my hand too close? It feels close. I'm okay with it. All right. Uh, <laughs> jet. We'll go jetway. So I'm running down the jetway. And then there's also the possibility that some cum stain out in uh, Delta is like, oh, what's this? See something, say something. Let me grab this uh, blue bag here and uh, walk it over and, and search for the bomb squad with the German Shepherd and the, the slimy shits. So luckily it's still there. I run over. I trip over an old guy. I grab the bag. I'm wearing no mask, by the way. I just like ran out. Boom, grabbed it, run back on, and I made it. But uh, oh. wow, it felt like I, I left it. Special needs kid in a burning building. It's the worst feeling in the world. I mean, I had that with just a clueless puzzle. When I was back home going, where's the clueless puzzle? Oh, God. Because in your mind, anything you lose, you're like, that's the most valuable thing I have, even though it was a $12 puzzle that we would have never done and whatever. Oh, right, But right. just uh, the backpack's the worst because, like you said, all your shit's in there. It's terrifying. I got mine right here. I never I never let it leave my ass. But do you have that? I mean, you have to constantly be thinking backpack, backpack. Because you put it down, it's over. I'm a constant... I, I mean, I'm OCD, so I got uh, I have OCD. I, I'm, I'm always patting my keys, my ass, my wallet, everything constantly. Yeah, yeah, because you know we talk about the the sunglasses. And do you ever do this one? I'll go. Okay, your sunglasses are sitting right there at the restaurant. Don't forget them. And in my head, I go. Oh, I've taken care of the sunglasses because I said don't forget them. But I, in my head, it thinks I've grabbed them. Well, I'm one of these big. Remind me of this, because it's not that I need the person to remind me, but if I say remind uh-huh. me, somehow that helps. Yes, yes. And Sarah, I have to say, is a good wife. She's good at the reminder. Like, mm. she's one of these people, when you say remind me of this, she does it. Okay. Uh-oh. Crime's through the roof here. Uh, so, a couple things. I just want to just quick quick shout out. Tacoma uh, did the Tacoma Comedy Club. It was fucking amazing. Andrew Rivers was a opener, a killer. Uh, just He's a, a killer. He had great jokes. Great. He was one of those uh, sets where I'm like, oh, I got something like that. Can't do that. Oh, I got something like that. Oh, like geez. He's just really good. Good stuff. And just the crowds were hot and so many twos gays and boozing. And Tacoma, I like Tacoma. Tacoma was like low pressure. It was right after L.A. So it was like, I'm just going to stare at that mountain, jerk off, and have a cocoa. It's so weird. We both 
we're in Tacoma the same day. We just missed each I, other. It's crazy. And then, uh, and then Sam was in Spokane. Yeah. Jeremy Spokane. We all were in Washington within a couple of days, but none of us saw each other. Yeah, we yeah. We were far yeah. away from each other, I guess. But. Jews in the night, just passing each other. And so then came back, had a great New York moment. Back in New York after all that L.A., all the Tacoma, all the Utah, all great. Get back to New York. I got to sit at the city winery. Mm. Classy joint. Yes, very. Nice pay, nice meal. So they text me, and they go, it's sold out. And I go, oh, great. That's fun. And then they go, we got a drop in. Oh, boy. And I go, ooh, well, we've had Louie there. We've had a David Tell there. Like, where do we go from here? You know, maybe Gaffigan, maybe Seinfeld. Who knows? I think I know who it is. Aha. Uh-huh. So Mulaney pops in. I was wrong. Post rehab. Ooh. He does the rehab set. Oh, wow. Yes. I missed it. Oh. Ah, my cut. I had eight gigs. I ran there. He's getting off. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I saw him in the back. I said, hey, it's good to have you back. And he was like, oh, yeah, who are you? And then uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he hates me, but I'm such a fan. And it's just great to have him back. And I think he's going to have a huge pop. And he's doing shows again. And uh, it was exciting to be a part of that. Like, I'm on the show where he came back and the crowd was at Twitter. Well, he's such a fan. I figured it was going to be Rock because Rock mm. is, uh, I got some inside dope that he's going to be around. That oh, guy. well, we, we little, need him around. I got a little uh, inside knowledge that I think he's going to be hitting okay. the scene. Oh, good, good. I, I'd like to see him hit something. Yeah, so I think he's going to be around. But uh, Mulaney's one of those guys we've talked about before. I don't understand him because he just seems to come out with killer shit. I he doesn't know. even do a set. It's like he does a candlestick in the mirror. He's like, uh, you never see him anywhere. He's like Batman or he is. somebody you don't see that often because My all dad. of a sudden... He comes out and just has, like, amazing stuff. I know. I know. You never see him testing it or failing with it. You know, he's never, it's like never a Rocky set. He just shows up with killer stuff. I think he's just like a phenom. He's just got it. Yeah, I'm glad he's around. He's one of the best ever, and uh, I hope to bump into him myself because yeah. he's uh, special. Yeah. I hope he doesn't uh, dislike us, but, you know, I always assume that. Oh, jeez. He said us. Oh, Went well, from you straight. to us. What, did he say something about I'm me? I'm bringing you with me. Did he make a face? Did he, uh, did he mention he me? He didn't come up. Because I've texted him before, and it oh, seemed okay. okay. But okay. that was like a couple of years ago. I saw him at the U.S. Open, and I said, hey, I see you at the U.S. Open. So that was it. Oh, but fun. he might have been like, why are you texting me, you piece of shit? He I, has my Bob Dylan DVD from 20 years oh, ago. Oh, all right. At least you got some collateral. Yeah, I never got it back. So if anything, I should not like him, but I do like him. So what the fuck? Uh-huh. Yeah, you should go to rehab for stealing. So... Then uh, we did Baltimore this weekend. Baltimore was amazing. Fun time. And But I had the Amtrak. It, don't you love the Amtrak? You don't have to get on a plane. I don't have to take my fucking shoes off. I don't have to take my laptop out. But. Pre-check. Four-hour delay on Amtrak. Oh. Isn't, I'm eating over here. I know. Isn't that a kick in the taint? So, yes. yeah, <laughs> I, I just walking around Penn Station. I, I, I start to turn into one of the homeless guys at first. You're like, look at this fucking creep. Then two hours later, I'm like, uh, you know, my clothes are torn. I stink. I'm pissing on the fucking floor. And uh, I have no pre-show ritual. Do you have a ritual? No. Well, I go to Starbucks a lot. And... No, you got rituals. You, you, you smirk, but you got a rich. I mean, I go and get my tea if I can. If there's a Starbucks, I like to have a tea. But, I mean, I'm not do. I'm not doing a cross and <laughs> taking a shit or anything sure yeah same but some people get weird they gotta wear the same socks like it's the mets game in the 80s or whatever but i only have this i'd like to get a shower in i like oh, a, shower I mean, a shower, shower. <laughs> i mean if we're talking if we're saying a shower is a ritual then i have a ritual i, I clean my body before i go out well sometimes people just oh uh, shit i didn't shower today i'll go up you know no but that's disgusting i got a shower and i i've saved my shower sometimes for the show because i'm like hey thursday night i haven't showered in five days but this is a club show weekend spot headlining let me get a shower in but that just delay just kept now it's leaving at 2.30, now 3, now 3.30, now 4, now 4.30. So I'm getting there at 7.40. The show starts at 7.30. Okay. But that's getting to Baltimore Penn Station. You still got to get to the club in Timonium with an Uber. Right. Ugh. So I finally make it. The feature's on stage, and I haven't showered. My hair's got semen in it. Uh, I got crusty mouth, you know, like that Penn Station mouth, and I've got the film on me, and uh, oh. it was fine, but... Just the, one of the tough things about, then you got to do like a meet and greet. I sold merch. It was just, oh boy, when I got back to that hotel, I just showered it up, baby. It's exhausting, some of those things, because anything goes wrong. You're just, we're, we're such particular I cunts. Know. So when something goes wrong, you, 
you have this thing of like, I was going to do this. I was yes, going to do that. It took yes. you a full day to get right again. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, we got right and we did all these shows and it was great. And uh, thanks for having me. Umar Khan killed. And, uh, yeah, so great weekend. I'm back today i know that's another thing i don't this is where we are different this arriving and just doing a podcast i was in your house before you were i mean this is, I this is goofy it, it's uh it's a lot but you know we do it for the folks and the the, the art of it and uh queefs yeah we appreciate it and by the way i mean i know we say it every time but now we mean, i feel like conan this is how conan starts every show i always say this but this time we mean it the patreon is like sick it's dope it's uh fire hella. yeah it's fire hella dope lit. cool lit it's it's Fam. hot it's whatever we're doing a new hot gay sets there's a 32 minute episodic documentary of us on a road trip out to long beach we're doing one tonight we're running the stand and cellar chuck is here on the twos and the fours yeah and Chuck he's shooting us uh, and we're going to go get smoothies. We're going to go to the stand. We're going to go to the cellar. We're shooting all of it, and we're doing another Musqueef TV. You got that right. There it is, the dick, the logo, the whole thing. So we're doing that, and we're about to do one of those. We're about to do each of these. They're all coming out HD, three-camera shoot. Get on the Patreon. I mean, it's like, it's like a TV show. It is. It's its own channel. It's like having Hulu or some shit, but it's woo-woo, and uh, it's fun times. Chuck's got the quality goods. He's got the skills. He's uh, got a... Decent, her girthy piece. And Seems like it. Girthy? Oh, all right. He's giving no. us the nana, really. Well, it's, it's, it's like an hourglass, it looks like. Uh -huh. We're playing charades here. but It's thin in the middle. And, uh, and, and it uh, takes 10 minutes. So we're still but, doing that. And Shelby, by the way, is still on the stuff. He's doing the other yes, thing and this Shelby. thing and that thing. So uh, we're all here. We got a family. We added a new member. It's a, it's a five-man operation now, counting Fanny, who, God bless her. So uh, keep tuning in. Keep sending us the thing. And you can get on there for four bucks. It's a buck a week. Buck a week. $1 chuck a week. a week. Yes, a buck for a chuck. So Two buck chuck. Get on there. I got to do my last push. This weekend, Austin, Paramount Theater. We added a second show. First show, by the way, is not quite sold out. Still a few ticks. We expect to sell out. That'll second sell. show, my God, there's about 11 people coming to this fucking thing. So for God's sakes... Get tickets to the 10 p.m. Get Come to both shows. Whatever. Don't do that. That would suck. I'd yeah, I hate that. But that's awesome. The weekend after that, comics at, what's it called? Roadhouse. Mohegan. Ro comics Roadhouse at Mohegan Sun. Matt Wayne's coming. Ooh. He loves hockey. Oh, he loves, nice. uh, you know, overboard. We talk about those two things, and that's it. Sure. But uh, <clears throat> so come to that. You know what's going to be good? You're doing the big, big, big R on Retards? Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, Rogan. <laughs> yeah, yes. and that might... Well, but you know, it comes out nine days later now, or Yeah, weeks. much like Chuck. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that'll help, but you know, you post about it, and then people go, who's this guy? I don't know. You get in the algo a little bit. Who might knows? something. So keep an ear out for that. Check those out. And you are you got dates up the ass, I assume. I'm on the road uh, like a dog for the next couple of months, so uh, come on out. Uh, phew, geez, Hartford's tickets are horrible. Uh, where else am I? I don't know. I'm doing Spokane. Uh, yikes. Sorry, I should know this. Dayton, Toledo, uh, Virginia Beach, uh, all the tough ones. Portland, Oregon, Buffalo, Syracuse. Oh, God, this is going to be tough. Houston Improv, let's sell that thing out. Philly Healy, I'm one of my favorites. And, uh, yeah, so just come on out, check the website, Arlington Improv, wherever that is. Brea in the Los Angeles area, Albany. Woo, West Palm Beach, Comedy Connection out in Big Prov. Love hey. that club. So, yeah, come on out, say hello, get a T-shirt, get a Chipotle card, queef it up, kiss me on the nipples, and, you know, fuck your kids. George Sink got it. Praise Allah.